Hello, this is Christine O'Connor and I'm just going to talk about metal toxicity and metal drugs. So metals can be sorted into two classes depending on how they interact with ligands. So class A metals, they form the most stable complexes with lighter ligands such as um, ones that contain nitrogens or oxygens or fluorides and these metals which are also known as Lewis acids are small and not very polarizable. This means that their electrons are not easily removed. They prefer ligands which are Lewis bases which are also small and difficult to polarize and these will be known as hard acids and bases. Metals um, in class A include alkali metals, which are group 1 metals, alkaline earth metals, group 2 metals, or your transition metals. So you have your S and your D block metals. These metals are not normally toxic at normal levels. So biological systems have some knowledge of these metals. For example, your calcium in your bones or your iron in your blood and they are well protected from any excess. So your body knows how to regulate these metals within your body. Class B metals then form the most stable complexes with heavier ligands. These metals are large and easily polarizable and prefer ligands which are large and easy to polarize such as soft acids and bases. These met metals include heavy transition metals, such as mercury, platinum, silver, copper, gold, lead and arsenic. Biological systems have little knowledge of these metals. Introduction of these metals into an organism is the equivalent to the introduction of a poison. So to our bodies, these type of metals are toxic. Metal toxicity. These metals combine to soft ligands such as the sulfur or the nitrogen atoms of enzymes. This displaces the metal normally present in the enzyme and therefore disrupts normal enzyme action or membrane properties. A metal becomes toxic when its concentration rises above a certain level. This occurs in two ways. The metal is either ingested, which is metal poisoning, or it's broken down in the body's control system. The treatment then for poisoning um, by metals, one is um, using chelating ligands, and these are used to treat metal toxicity because they bind to the toxic metal more strongly than they bind uh, groups of enzymes. So the requirements of this type of chelating ligand is that number one, it must be a chelating ligand because it forms a very stable complex. Number two, it must be a soft base to bind with a soft acid, which is the metal. Number three, the ligand must be non-toxic. And number four, resulting uh, complex must be non-toxic, soluble and easily excreted by the body. The disadvantages of using a ligand, most chelating ligands are toxic at high concentrations because they remove necessary metals within the body and most chelating ligands are unselective and may not remove the toxic metal but rather metals that we do need within our body. So let's have a look at some examples. The first one here is arsenic. So it's a lewisite or a poisonous gas um, contains arsenic. So this is the structure of the uh, lewisite or poisonous gas. And this binds strongly to the thio groups or SH groups of enzymes, which then become inactive. So the antidote is known as BAL, which is British anti-lewisite or also known as dimercaprol. It binds more strongly than the enzyme to arsenic and the resulting complex is excreted. So you can see the structure here 
of dimer caprol and this is also used to treat mercury, gold and bismuth poisoning. So you can see here that you have an arsenic containing compound here, 2 chloro vinyl arsenic dichloride and when you put it in the presence of the dimer caprol what you get is that the arsenic binds to the two sulfur groups of the dimer caprol forming this complex here which is non-toxic in the presence of hydrochloric acid and this can be easily excreted and it's all water soluble. Iron, although a necessary metal, in excess iron can be toxic causing diarrhea, siderosis and cardiac collapse. So the antidote for um, iron is desferoxamine, which is a polyhydrooxamic uh, acid and has uh, some specificity for iron. Copper. Again, normally 100 to 150 grams of, or sorry, milligrams of copper are found in the brain stem and liver. And in patients with Wilson's disease, copper can be up to 100 times greater in concentration than normal. And these de then it's de deposited in the liver, brain, and kidneys. It inhibits ATPAs and leads to liver and nervous system disorders. So the antidote is penicillinamine, which does not seem to deplete the normal stores of copper, but does remove the excess of copper in treating Wilson's disease. So again, you can see here, we have excess copper in the body, and then you give a penicillinamine, and the copper is going to bind across this sulfur and uh, nitrogen here, so we get this uh, complex forming with the copper and you've lost um, hydrogen from the sulfur and the um, nitrogen uh, positions here. Lead. Lead, although toxic, is given intentionally as an x-ray contrasting agent in the form of lead EDTA. And this complex dissociates to give free lead which must be removed and the antidote there is more EDTA. So here is the structure of EDTA here and this is your metal ion and you'll just see how it binds on to the metal ion to remove it. The disadvantages of using EDTA is that it's very unselective hence we've highlighted this as a metal ion so it will remove any metal especially calcium Therefore, if you're treating a patient with EDTA, um, you have to give them calcium salt to prevent removal of the um, calcium from the skeleton, uh, which we spoke about in the previous um, lecture. EDTA is hydrophilic and will not progress through the stomach to the enzyme sites. Therefore, EDTA cannot be taken orally and must be delivered through IV. EDTA also acts very slowly because it acts indirectly. So it does not remove the metal from the enzyme, it removes the metal from solution and this releases metals from the enzymes. So this continues until all of the metal is removed and therefore the process is quite slow. So EDTA is also used to treat vanadium and copper poisoning or toxicity. So um, in saying that uh, some metal drugs are quite uh, useful. So synthetic metal chelates are used to treat a range of disorders. So they are active against many bacteria, fungi and viruses. The complexes act by physical interactions they can inactivate a virus by occupying sites on its surface, which would normally be used in the initiation of the infection of the host cell. Alternatively, the complex can penetrate the cell wall and prevent virus reproduction 
or the complex can occupy sites on the cell surface blocking virus entry. So an example here is an iron 3 complex so it's known as an oxime or 8-hydroxyquinoline and this has antifungal and acti antibacterial properties when chelated to iron 3. Neither the ligand or the metal on their own are effective. So when you form the complex then you see the therapeutic activity. Platinum 2 complexes are used as anti-tumor drugs. So these properties um, are a function of the square planar D8 structure. So the cis version of uh, cisplatin was found to be active against various tumors and the trans isomer is completely inactive against cancer tumors. So the cis isomer inhibits the synthesis of DNA. It interacts directly with the cell DNA and the two chlorine ions are lost and the two platinum nitrogen bonds form to the adjacent guanine bases on the DNA. So this forms a cross link or a kink in the DNA helix which is recognized by repair enzymes in normal cells but not in tumor cells. So just up here we see that this is the cis version of cisplatin which is what the drug is known at, as. So you have platinum there in the center and this is the trans version of transplatin. So the distance between the chlorides on the cis isomer here matches the distance between the nitrogens on the DNA helix. So the chlorides on the trans isomer are too far apart from each other, whereas the chlorides on the cis isomer are the correct position. So here's our DNA helix. This is our cis platin. And then you lose the two chlorines and then the platinum binds onto the nitrogens on the DNA helix which either causes DNA repair in healthy cells or cell death in uh, tumor cells. Um, there's lots of side effects and, and this drug doesn't treat every um, cancer but there is a lot of work being done on these type of drugs with metals in place. And I hope you found this interesting. Thank you.